This is a very niche topic. In this video, we'll be comparing the best SFF low profile GPU options. We'll be doing this not only from the perspective of gaming, but also from the perspective of all types of GPU use cases, including machine learning. Now, what do I mean by a low profile, small form factor GPU? Well, small form factor can mean a couple of things, like if you have a GPU, if it's a small form factor, it might have one fan or two fans, which makes it relatively short, which makes it fit into lots of cases. A low profile one is something that looks like this, where it is half height on the IO shield, which makes it even smaller in height. And uh, that is the niche subject we're going to be talking about, because you can build a very small, petite build in these form factors, and there's not a whole lot of options that, that you can choose from if you want high performance or for gaming or for any other purpose you might have for a high-powered GPU, relatively high-powered GPU. Um, so even though power efficiency on the latest graphics cards has gone up dramatically, there's been a trend over the last few generations of making cards bigger and bigger than we've ever seen before. For small form factor enthusiasts, it's forced many of us to get creative with the performance to get the per it's forced many of us to get creative to get the performance we want in the size we want as well. This has been especially true of the Nvidia 4000 series. Even now that the 4060 and 4070 cards have released, almost none of them are short in length. Uh, rarely having single or dual fan configurations that tend to be small form factor. And there's even less options that are low profile. There really aren't too many of these cards around. Uh, but in the last several months, a few attractive options have come onto the market, including the Gigabyte 4060 low profile and also the PNY RTX 4000 SFF 8th generation card. Now, today we'll be comparing these two cards, the Gigabyte Low Profile and the PNY RTX 4000 SFF 8th generation card. And we're gonna see which one of them can be the best low profile, short, for, small form factor card for your next tiny gaming PC. First, let's dive into the specs. Okay, so let's talk about these two cards that we have here. As you can see, they are very small. The Gigabyte uh, is based on a regular 4060 architecture. And uh, the RTX 4000 ADA generation is uh, based on a similar architecture, uh, but it is the ADA generation and you will see that the difference between them is mainly a couple of things. Uh, first off, uh, the RTX 4000 card is quite a few more CUDA cores, 6144 versus 3072. The memory clock's actually a little bit slower, but the bus is actually wider, which allows it to have more overall memory bandwidth. The other big differentiator between these two cards is the 20 gigabytes of RAM versus eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, also, the power consumption. This is a low profile 4060, but it still uses about 115 watts, where this card over here only uses 70 watts and does not even need additional power connectors. It only connects uh, power through the main board itself, which is pretty amazing. Uh, the RTX 4000 uh, is a little bit smaller in length, uh, 182 millimeter versus 168. And other than that, you can see that the Ada card has a uh, four mini display port, 1.4A, while the RTX 4060 low profile has display port 1.4A, two of those, and then uh, two HDMI as well. So, there is uh, a lot of interesting things here going on. It's the same architecture. Uh, it's all 4000 series, but eight gigabytes of RAM, clocked higher, higher power consumption versus more cores, more RAM, 
less power consumption, just more cores to continue to push <laughs> wider data sets. Uh, so we'll have to see how that plays out in the benchmark. So it's actually really interesting. Uh, this card is, is pr I like it a lot. It kind of shows what a video card could be if uh, NVIDIA actually wanted to uh, put a little more silicon on their chips. So it's a really interesting card here. Okay, let's start off with a good old Time Spy, and we can see that the 4060 low profile 8 gigabyte with 115 watts gave us a 10173 in Time Spy on the GPU score, where the RTX 4000 SFF with 20 gigabytes of RAM gave us 9996. Now, uh, that puts these cards very, very even. The interesting thing, though, is the over 60% greater power draw on the 4060 LP, which is pushing higher clocks with less cores, where the RTX 4000 is pushing a lot more cores at a lower clock speed uh, while achieving a very similar score. But let's continue on. Time Spy Extreme even things out a little bit more, and I imagine that this being a 4K test and this having uh, more RAM is probably why this evened itself out a little bit here. Again, same, almost same exact score, but this GPU using 70 watts and this one using 115. Moving on to Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. Uh, we can see this is the first real win uh, for the 4060 LP. Again, it's using a lot more power to do it, but it does rack up quite a bit more points. 15,362 versus 13,858. Moving on to superposition, uh, now we see the 4000 SFF get a win here. 14. 017 on the 4060 LP, where the RTX 4000 SFF 20 gigabyte gets 14,404. Moving on to Port Royal with the RTX test here. Again, uh, really all these scores are very similar to each other, um, but the 4060 LP gets 5848, where the RTX 4000 gets a 5958. Now, if we look at all the overall scores and you compare them, like they are very roughly the same um, to each other. The, the biggest outlier being the Final Fantasy 15 stock, which uh, the Ada 4000 took about 9.79% hit, um, but it did have a couple gains, a few percentage points uh, there in Superposition and Poor Royal. But the Basically, what we're seeing is the overall performance between these two cards for gaming, mind you, because we're going to get into some machine learning and workstation uh, applications. Uh, but if you're just looking at a gaming card, that 4060 looks very attractive and it's if you need something in this form factor uh, versus the Ada <clears throat> Generation 4000 SFF. Now, if you don't do any workstation productivity tasks that we're going to look at here in a second, uh, I would say this card is definitely going to be your pick. It's going to give you the most uh, bang for your buck. It's going to give you the most performance, but uh, eight gigabytes of RAM could be an issue for you. But let's now look at some more uh, AI machine learning tasks and see what those look like when you compare these two cards. The biggest outlier being the fact that this card over here has 20 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so the first thing I did uh, to test these out was run it through Stable Diffusion. Uh, that's a great compute task, and you can see that uh, the 4060 LP running the exact same seed configuration uh, and everything took 9 minutes and 14.5 seconds, where the RTX 4000 SFF with its uh, larger memory uh, was able to do the same amount of work in only 3 minutes and 37 seconds. So it was basically uh, doing things in almost a third of the time that the 4060 LP was. So that's great to see here. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, more compute, and this time we're using a large language model with 7 billion parameters. 
And you might notice there's a surprise win here. Uh, the 4060 LP actually was able to do 21.68 tokens per second, where the RTX 4000 only did 19.34 tokens per second. Uh, but then again, these the 7 billion parameter model fits into the GPU memory of both of these cards. And the memory is actually clocked a little higher in this one. Um, and, you know, has more watts to work with, just like we've seen in other tests. But the second you move to a 13 billion uh, parameter model, uh, what you can see is that still easily fits within the 20 gigabytes of RAM. And in this case, we got 12.6 tokens per second on a 13 billion parameter model, where the 4060 now, it, the model no longer fit in that 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it slowed to a massive, uh, very slow uh, performance versus the RTX 4000. And uh, the other thing to talk about is a 30 billion parameter model and within that 20 gigabytes of ram on the rtx 4000 it actually fits and can run quickly uh, where this card is just done it basically would have to move any vram out to the shared memory and start using cpu and it just would slow it down to an absolute crawl if you want to see what that looks like <laughs> take a look here so let's see how quick these take to respond Oh, the 20 gigabyte card is already on its way. Still waiting on the 4060. Still thinking on the 4060. And you get you kind of get the point here, right? I, I I mean, the eight when the model does not fit inside <laughs> your parameter, it just does not perform. And even once it does start going, you can see that the text is just very slow, and it's just not very quick when it doesn't have the RAM that it needs. All right, so what did we find out? Well. Uh, these are some really sweet cards if you want a small form factor with low profile. It's kind of your only option for something that has at least a mid to medium uh, performance GPU uh, with 4060 class performance. Now, if you are just going to be gaming on a small, short form, small form factor build, uh, I would say that this gigabyte is all you need. Uh, you're not going to pay out the nose for it. Uh, However, if you want to do more interesting things, if you're going to be needing that small form factor, low profile inside some sort of server case, and or you just want to be able to play around with the workstation capabilities, the larger RAM of this device, uh, this still may be worth taking a look at. Um, so yeah, that's it's, it's a pretty easy recommendation if you're in the market for something like this if you know what you're going to be doing with one of these two cards. Now, I will say one thing about this one. Uh, I've been in talks with a company that does modifications on the RTX 4000 SFF card, and they have a special procedure that allows you to bump from the 70 watt stock up to a 110 watt performance. And with the CUDA cores being so high, what they are, it's basically close to 4070 uh, number of CUDA cores. With that additional wattage, you actually can get one of the smallest, most compact, most uh, power per volume card that exists in the world today using this. They also have a really cool copper heat sink. Uh, and uh, if you want to see more of that, I will be taking a look at that in a video in the future. So get subscribed up and we'll see how, uh, how much performance we can get in SFF LP form factors. And we'll see you on a future video. Thanks for watching.